Mia's mother, who a moment before had been lying down weakly, shot straight up in the bed. After one scream, there was another, and a third, and a fourth. The scream sounded more and more painful, but also increasingly weak. It sounded like a dying woman who was making a feeble confession to the world. Mia's father and daughter rushed directly to the bedside. Mom! Mia cried. Mia's father grabbed Bray by the collar, lifting him up and pressing him against the wall. Bray! What the hell is going on here? He shouted. Bray was completely helpless looking, like a child. His face was full of fear, and his hand holding the syringe kept shaking. I, I don't know what's going on, he said. I'll fix it. Let me try to fix it. Try? Mia's father was like a furious lion. The murderous look in his eyes almost shattered Bray on the spot. You want to try with my wife's life on the line? I'll fight you here and now, you good for nothing! Bray was so terrified that he shut his eyes. His head retracted into the corner of the wall, like a turtle shrinking into its shell. Just as Mia's father was about to punch Bray into next week, he heard Mia's urgent rebuke. Dad, don't worry about this jerk. We've got to take mom to the hospital. Mia's father immediately withdrew his fist and said hopelessly, How? I don't have a car and the taxi service isn't running all the way out here. He pointed to Bray, who was cowering in the corner of the room and angrily said, We're taking your car and you're not going to have anything to say about it. Y yes sir! Mia felt her mother's breaths growing weaker and weaker still. The more anxious Mia grew, the less she knew what to do. Aiden had been standing in the door, watching silently, but at this time, he coughed to get their attention. This sound, in Mia's ears, was like the sound of an angel descending directly from the heavens. She looked up with tears streaming down her face. Looking at Aiden with hope in her eyes, she said, You have your car with you, don't you? Mia's father kneeled down in front of Aiden like he was praying for his own life. Sir, I'm so, so sorry. I was wrong just now, I know it. Please save my wife, please. If you are now so sure that you were wrong, why did this happen to begin with? Aiden shook his head, looking at the begging family with consternation. He neither agreed to nor refused what they were asking for. He simply approached Bray with a sense of urgent demand in his eyes. I'll lend you my syringe. Bray shakily lifted his palm toward Aiden with the syringe still sitting in it. Aiden approached Mia's mother. One by one, he removed the syringes that were sticking out of her thighs and arms. With all the needles pulled out, Mia's mother's face was twisted even further in pain and she was quickly turning a horrid shade of blue. Stop it! You're hurting her! Bray stood up quickly, but did not go so far as to stop Aiden. Almost as soon as he stood up, he paused and began watching in awe. Mia and her father were also watching Aiden without blinking. Their eyes were full of wonder. Aiden took a different medicine from out of the medical kit, put a small dose into the syringe, and slowly inserted it into Miss Adam's side. As soon as he began to inject this new medicine, her screams stopped. Reconstructing a scene from memory, triggering master level medical skills. A map of the human body appeared in Aiden's mind, and the names of different muscles and veins and medications and dosages swam in his head. He moved back and forth quickly, putting different medicines into various syringes and inserting them in various places on Miss Adam's body. He let the system guide him as he placed this medicine in the fat of her stomach, and another directly into her veins, and so on and so forth. One needle, two needles, three, the more syringes were inserted, the more difficult it was for Aiden to continue. Part of Miss Adam's bodily resistance came from the poison, which seemed to be reacting to the medicines quickly, like it was trying to protect itself. The other part of the resistance came from the needles themselves. The system indicated that they needed to be placed in very specific areas for maximum efficiency. If Aiden accidentally placed them even an inch to the left or right, the map in his mind flashed red, and he had to remove the needle and place it again. After the tenth syringe, Miss Adams was covered in dot-sized wounds and her stomach had become oddly distended. At the same time, the blue and black colors in her skin became even more obvious. Mia and her father watched nervously, but they knew not to interfere for fear of accidentally making things worse. They held their breath and watched nervously. Bray watched Aiden in continued amazement. He knows the exact place to put every single one of those in the way that only the most experienced doctor could impossible. When he had first gone into medicine, Bray had only understood the basics, and as the years went by, he didn't bother to learn much more. He often had another doctor with him when he went on calls and relied on them to do much of the heavy lifting. On the other hand, on his own, Bray barely knew what everything in his kit even did. And now, 
A teenager he barely knew was able to take everything from his bag and use it with perfect confidence. It was like he had invented the treatments he was using. His confidence could only be matched by someone with decades of experience. Was this kid a man or a god? Almost done now, Aiden murmured, releasing all his nervous energy as he placed a needle between two of Miss Adam's toes. With this needle placed, Mia's mother's abdomen became even more bloated. There was only one more syringe left to place. But now, Aiden was stressed and exhausted almost to a breaking point. It had been quite a long couple of days for him. He powered through it, even as his hand shook, placing the 11th syringe. Execute a complex treatment plan. Medical skills, plus one. Fight exhaustion. Resilience, plus one. Energy upgrade. Current level, mastery level. This upgrade came at the perfect time. His energy and resilience had long lagged behind his other skill upgrades, but now he had finally reached the master level. It felt like a rain shower in the Sahara. Renewing waters poured into his weakening joints and limbs and gave him a new burst of energy and drive. A burst of hyper-consciousness filled his mind, like his body was flooded with endless power. At that moment, he could have run a marathon. When he closed his eyes, gathered himself and opened them again, he was full of energy again. He focused all this energy into the problem at hand. The final syringe landed precisely on the last place the system indicated. As he pushed the final plunger into Mia's mother's side, it was like a miracle unfolded in front of all of their eyes.